All right. I'm here uh, with my buddy, Justin McGill from leadfuse.com. Justin, how's it going? It's going well. Thanks for having me, man. All right. So, you know, for those who aren't familiar with Leadfuse, uh, what, I mean, what's the quick elevator pitch and basically what, what, what do you guys do at Leadfuse? Yeah, essentially, you know, super high level. We just automate lead generation for B2B companies. So we gather contact information uh, for your ideal prospects and then we allow you to, you know, automate that outreach and, and the follow ups to them. Very cool. Yeah. So it's for, for a while early on, you kind of had a service play where you were helping to manage that, that sales outreach for customers. And now you're, I guess, purely a software company with, with tools for, for doing email outreach and sales outreach. Yeah, really, the, the service was actually just a way to validate the model. It wasn't actually planned to you know, be a service driven company. I have an agency background and I wanted to kind of transition out of providing service. So this was just kind of a way to, you know, see if this model worked without investing, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in development and, and six to 10 months in, you know, time frame. So, um, you know, wanted to push it out there as quickly as I could. Yeah. Luckily, I had some software built up over the over the years at my agency to help kind of facilitate some of this. And so I just wrapped a service around it where all of that was going to be run by me. All of the software would be run by me. Client would sign up and, you know, we would just forward over leads as they came in. So that that kind of helped prove that people would buy it, but then simultaneously helped fund it. You know, yeah. I didn't need to go out, you know, for outside funding. And we just recently raised money, but that was obviously well after things were validated and we could just use that to, you know, to start growing. So very cool. So, I mean, if I remember correctly, like since the very beginning of Lead Fuse and throughout the past year or two, you've, you've been working on it. I think content has been has played a pretty uh, important role for you guys. You guys have been pretty consistent with putting out a lot of blog content and doing webinars and, and different things. Um so I guess my first question here is just like, first, like, how do you define your target customers for Leadfuse? And then how does content, how does that play into the type of content that you produce? Yeah. So for me, I mentioned I have a, a digital marketing agency background. So I knew coming in right when I started the business that content was going to be a huge focus because it doesn't happen overnight. You know, you can't just start a campaign and then you start getting visitors. So I knew there was going to be, you know, a good six month ramp up time to even start to see some of those benefits. But wanted to, you know, just start producing content consistently right out of the gate. And so for us, you know, we have to look at, okay, who who are our target customers. And in our case, you know, it's a lot of startups and small business owners and um, a lot of agencies in, in particular. And, um, you know, to, to a slightly lesser degree, sales teams for, you know, B2B companies and so sales managers and, and salespeople. Um, and so luckily, you know, I got my, my content initially was, I mean, we were providing revenue reports, obviously on our, you know, we've got zero to scale as a podcast, which is also a form of content, uh, which has been, you know, just hugely important for us. But ultimately, um, you know, you, you want to produce the content that is going to appeal to your target market and you want to help them be successful, right? So, um, you know, I was sharing lessons in, in our revenue uh, early on, kind of went away from that after about six months or so. Yeah, so like in the very early days, it was kind of like a founder's story of a, of a new mm -hmm. startup, like Leadfuse, the startup. But then I think over time, you evolved more into like sales training kind of stuff and your experiences doing sales for the company, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And in and, and large part, because that was like our, our market started to grow and, and change a little bit too. So initially, you know, I, I'm, I'm say connected to a lot of different startup founders and, and early stage startups. And so it made sense for me to create content for them because that's who I could reach immediately. And so when I'm sharing the content on social or, you know, in different groups that I'm in, that's the audience that's there. And so it's like um, you, you happen to be in those channels anyway. So it's like, right. Yeah. So, so there's that, but then, you know, we kind of went away from it also just because we have zero to scale the podcast where, you know, week by week, I mean, we're sharing revenue and, and going into all those numbers and everything uh, and, and what we're doing. So I just felt it was like duplicating a lot of work. And so I, I just didn't really feel like that was worth the time. And so uh, there was that angle, but then also as our, you know, again, our user base and our audience started to, to grow, um, you know, we, we needed to better educate. And so we started to put together that, you know, sales hack type content, if you will. Yeah. So how have, uh, what's kind of changed in 
over time in, in the past year or two of, of, of doing content. I mean, we mentioned like early on, you shifted from startup journey to, you know, kind of sales focus, sales hacked kind of, kind of stuff, but like high level, like what, what else has changed and, and, and what have you learned in terms of like strategy uh, shifts and, and that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So, you know, uh, early on it was me and I was the main and only content producer. And then we brought on um, a content person in house and we also brought on a freelancer I had used several times at my agency. And so it, the way we produced content had kind of changed and evolved over time. However, what we're doing now is we're, so I actually just finished our kind of our, our plan, not necessarily in terms of what content we're creating, but just an entire process. Um, and so we're going to get much more rigid with how we, how we actually produce and, and promote content, but we're, we're going to involve the whole team. So salespeople are going to have, you know, a quota. It's, it's going to be one blog post per quarter. Uh, we're going to have customer, our customer success specialist will do two per month. And, you know, one is going to be like a case study type with a client or with a customer. And then another is going to be more of like a how to kind of maximize lead views essentially. And then I'll be doing a couple of posts per month. Uh, my, my partner uh, who heads up, you know, basically oversees sales and customer success, he'll be doing one post per month. And then, you know, we're going to actually go out and seek guest blog contributors as well. So, you know, that's going to happen a couple times a month. So, you know, we'll start producing two posts a week. And our goal is to, you know, be able to produce over a hundred pieces of content on our blog next year. So very cool. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. I've heard that, uh, pretty often, like a lot of companies either look to outsource their content, whether it's to, to like a service or, or just hire like one writer to do their content. But I've, I've seen more and more companies trying to pull in all the different roles from their team to contribute in some way, you know, from sales to developers, to customer support, to marketing, the founders themselves, like everyone should be contributing in some way, but you need to pull it all with, with a system and, and process. Yeah. And I think as long, you know, because everyone has their own unique perspectives, right? So salespeople, they, they're going to, you know, they'll be able to share their stories and things that are happening on the sales floor, so to speak. Our customer success person, they're the ones talking to customers and learning how, you know, they're having success with it and what they're doing to get the most out of it. And so, you know, everyone's kind of got their own little angle that we'll be able to, to leverage. The one thing that I don't know that we'll do is have our engineers involved on the, on the content side. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think everyone else will be what we're what we're thinking about doing is having them involved as kind of like a, a peer review. So, you know, they'll they'll actually provide some sort of, you know, level of editing, if you will. Um, and that kind of keeps them in tune with what's happening also. But I don't necessarily know if we're going to stick with that. We, we may just keep them kind of completely separate, if you will. So we'll see what happens there. But everybody else will be contributing. And at the same time, when we when we go to hire, I mean, we want these people to be able to write effectively. Right. It's, something, know, it's something that you're looking for now when you're hiring. Uh, absolutely. And, and especially if in sales, I mean, you know, you're going to you're going to be communicating with our potential customers. You know, we don't want you to embarrass us. Right. So, um, you know, Very it just cool. makes sense for for them to kind of have that commitment as well. So I definitely want to dive into the the process and the workflows, especially you've been updating those lately. So we'll get into that in, in a minute. But before I get there, I mean, I want to ask about just content marketing as a channel uh, compared to any of the other channels that you're, I mean, I'm sure you've run your own email outreach software for to, to get sales and, and customers and doing all sorts of other marketing channels and, and webinars. And I guess that's kind of a form of content in a way, but like Maybe over time, were there any certain points that you looked at, say, in the first six months, six to 12 months, where you kind of stepped back and evaluated, okay, is content even worth it? And is this working? And should we double down on it? Or, or, or like any, any like points that you can think about there? Yeah, I mean, early on, so early on, you know, like I mentioned, it just takes a while for that ramp up effect to, to start taking place. And so I knew going in that, you know, we were going to need to do other things to try and drive business also. And so obviously we used our tool, uh, you know, early on and that drove most of the results. Now, though, we're actually not really even using our tool for outbound. We're, we're, we have so much inbound and we don't uh, like our, our sales team is about to be hired here in the next month or so. And so we're, we're opening an office here locally and everything. And so we've got all this going on. And so right now we're just pretty much 
inbound at this point um, until, you know, about two months from now. And I mean, the last two months, I mean, we've had over 1,100 inbound free trial signups. And that's all from our content efforts, you know. And so, uh, you know, it, it's it's just the steady the steady you know increase, yeah. um, really just throughout the whole year and the last couple of years, really it's been like that since we started. So, um, so yeah, it's just you know a compounding effect because what you write, you know, if you can can you know can just continuously contribute content to your blog, then, you know, it, and say it, say it's driving, you know, a hundred visits initially that first month and, and, you know, the second month, maybe that drops and eventually it's just 10, 10 visits a month that people are seeing it, right. Even at a, at a lower level like that, but it's there. Right. And so the next piece that you have, well, now you have 20 and the next piece you exactly. have. And, and so the, as your, uh, yeah, I mean, I love to talk about like your content footprint continues to grow. There's more and more entry points where people can find you. Yeah. And it just compounds. I yeah. mean, it's just a beautiful thing, you know? So if you do it consistently and, and over time, I mean, it's, it's just so worth it. So, so I, I, again, like before we get into the, the nitty gritty, the, the workflows, I think everybody has this question trying to figure out how do you actually connect content to sales? How, how do, how does blogging or getting an email address or getting a, a Twitter follower, um, how do you think about that? And how, do, how does that turn into a lead into a customer for, for lead views? Yeah, it's, it's man, it's such a tricky thing to try and truly measure. Um, for us right now, it's easy because it's the only thing we're doing, right? Like we don't have <laughs> paid channels running, we don't have outbound running right now, so we know that this is all coming from inbound. But um, you know, there's there's some things that you can do, especially if you're running multiples. Obviously, uh, you know, multiple channels. So there is a there's a, a tool called like Traction Board, TractionBoard.com. And that kind of monitor that connects to like your payment processor. And so in our case, Stripe and it connects to your analytics. And so it's monitoring where traffic sources are coming from uh, or where your visitors are coming from and uh, tracks those traffic sources. And so then you can attribute signups to, you know, actual traffic sources. Um, you know, it, it's it's tricky. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's not a perfect science, unfortunately, like mm -hmm. it is with paid ads. You know, paid ads, you, you put in your budget, you've got your keywords, whatever, um, and, and you know exactly which keywords and which ad groups are performing. You know, content's just, it's so different. Um, you know, I can look at my analytics, though. I get a report in my Slack every day on... Uh, like new visitors to the to the website. And so that tells, you know, I, I can see new um, Google visitors and social traffic and how many of those are new versus returning, you know, so we're, we're, we're keeping a close eye on that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see you see those things start to, you know, increase as well. So, um, you know, that, uh, I'm not I'm not diving too close. Like there's ways to tell like which posts are driving revenue. You know, um, there's there's analytics platforms out there that help you with that. Uh, we're just not, you know, I guess concerned about which post individually is driving revenue. Right. Um, it's kind of like, you know, like content is just something that you're doing heavily anyway. It, it's not a yeah. question of like whether we should stop or double down. It's just like it, it needs to be continuously growing. It's an important part of your marketing stack, if you will. And yeah. And, uh, and so my thing is, I already know, like I know content works. What What you have to figure out is how to do it right. Right. You're right. You're just producing content and putting it on your blog, that, that's not content marketing, right? Like, right. so it's understanding who, who the content is for and coming up with the topics that actually attract the right people. And, and, and that it's good. It's not just rehashed garbage, right? So right. you have to actually, you know, put some thought into what that content will entail. It's got to be unique. You know, um, it's got to be something that people feel comfortable sharing and, and, you know, commenting on or whatever. So, um, you know, yeah, doing content is one thing, but doing it right, you know, is, is another. So, so yeah, I mean, like speaking of that, like, why don't we get into it? Like, what is your today? What, what, what's your process that your team follows to produce, uh, say one blog post and, and how do you do that on a consistent weekly ongoing basis? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is perfect timing actually. So I kind of just finished formalizing all of this. And so basically we have three kind of phases and it's, it's planning, it's producing and it's promoting. And so I'll, I'll kind of, I guess, go into each one of those if, if, if you'd like. I go can for kinda, it. Yeah. Okay. So, so from, a, from a planning standpoint, we use Trello and we have the, 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 the calendar power up within Trello. And so then we, we have our list set up as our ideas, um, what's planned, 
what's we're, we're currently writing, uh, editing, published, and promotion. So those are kind of our, our list within our Trello board. And so then what we'll do is I want to go and have at least the upcoming quarter completely mapped out. And so I'm looking at the next, you know, three months and I'm saying, okay, what are the holidays that are happening here? Because if you can try and, you know, squeeze in. So, so for example, I just actually wrote a post on the election and how, you know, Trump used kind of different sales tactics to, to win the election ultimately. And I mean, it's an unbiased, you know, from, from a political standpoint, it's just talking about, you know, the sales strategies that, that were used. But I was able to kind of leverage what's happening in in the world in in the news and kind of newsjacking or is kind mm-hmm. of what it's referred to in the content marketing world. Um, and so that's something that you know we we can do when you're kind of planning this out. Other than that, you know, kind of factoring in, okay, you know, we're going to be launching an, a new feature here or a new version here. And so kind of factoring in your product update, you know, post and where that kind of falls in that quarter. When, when you go beyond the quarter, you're, you're, you're going to have a harder time kind of planning those product update type posts. So uh, it gets a little more difficult. But, um, you know, that's why we have this idea inbox in Trello, right? Like mm-hmm. just, just load it up with all kinds of ideas, get hundreds and hundreds in there. And then, um, you know, once we're ready to start kind of placing that and, and you know, we basically we, we assign a due date to it, which then shows in our calendar where, uh, you know, when we need to start working on that piece of content. Mm-hmm. And at that point, we'll put it over into planned once we actually have a due date for it. And then uh, once we start to write it, we'll put it into the writing uh, list. And then within that writing list, I have like a whole checklist of things that, you know, we need to account for. So um, I don't know if you want me to to share that uh, checklist, but, um, you know. I, yeah, I that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we can link so, it up with this. Yep. So basically, uh, let me let me look at my list here. So uh, it's got to be a thousand words uh, minimum. Does it target one of our ICPs, um, uh, ideal customer personas? So founders, salespeople, leaders, you know, agencies. Does it have images? So, you know, we want multiple images throughout the post. Uh, have we done some sort of uh, peer review, you know, with other other people on the team? Uh, obviously, editing, spelling, grammar, um, you know, we're using subheadings. Did we append a content upgrade to the post? So the way we do content upgrades is based on the category. So if we have, you know, seven categories of content, each of those categories will have a corresponding content upgrade versus going one by one through each individual post and doing a content upgrade for each. Oh, interesting. Post. Okay. So, so you've, you've basically created like seven, uh, content upgrades that can apply to multiple posts. Yep, exactly. That's, that's Very relevant cool. still because it's based on that category, but it, you know, it's a little less resource intensive than trying to come up with one for every single post. Yeah, that makes sense. Is it a, you know, repurpose candidate? So this doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but, you know, I want people to think about, can we also, you know, create this into a slide share? Um, you know, we probably want to save this as a PDF. There's different PDF websites out there that, you know, help with, with link and, and virality. Uh, can it be converted into an infographic? So are there a lot of statistics and whatnot in here? Is it a, is a, is it a process driven post? Um, you know, obviously could, could make that into a podcast. Can, can we include a video, you know, so it just kind of asks these things. Um, is it optimized from an SEO standpoint? So, you know, I've got an SEO background, so, uh, you know, this is kind of near and dear to me, I guess, but is the target keyword in, in the headings. I mean, this is from an SEO, kind of a separate sub checklist, I guess. Um, is the keyword used within the first 100 words? Does the meta description contain the keyword? Does the post URL include the keyword? Are there it, basically I have here LSI keywords, which stands for latent semantic indexing, which is, you know, if you're talking about, uh, internet marketing, you know, reference digital marketing as well, because, you know, Google kind of understands that those two are the same essentially. Right, right. Uh, and so you can kind of rank for some similar keywords that way as well. Alt tags, are those optimized? Do we link to three, uh, what we call outer links? So three other websites. And so we want this as a requirement for a couple of reasons. One, linking out actually helps your own content link, uh, rank, rank better. Mm-hmm. Uh, B, we can reach out to those sources when, you know, we actually publish the post from a promotion standpoint. And it just lends more credibility to, you know, what, whatever it is that we're talking about. So on, on the also, production, well, just real quick, like on the production side, like what does your team, what do the roles look like? It, I, I know you're, you're having like your, 
your customer success people, your salespeople writing posts, but are they also doing all the setup and WordPress and the SEO optimization and setting up the, the meta tags and doing images yep. of the, or do you have like somebody else doing that kind of stuff? Nope. It's going to be, it's going to be all that one person, uh, that that's writing the post. So when they write it, they have this checklist of things that they're going to need to go through to make sure that, you know, it meets our, our quality guidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, the, and just real quick, the last one on the SEO is just interlink. So three interlinks. So linking to other, uh, content on Linking your own back to your own content page or blog. Yep. Cool. So, um, so and, yeah, and, so and also like how often are you, are you producing content? Our goal is two posts per week. Okay. So, uh, right now we're not at that point. And so our plan is going into 2017. We want two posts per week. We want to produce a hundred pieces of, of content on the lead views blog. And how, how far out do you assign a, a blog post for somebody to like, how long does, does one team member have to produce a blog post? Yeah. So depending on their, you know, uh, their, their quota, right? So customer success has two per month, uh, sales reps though is one per quarter. And so, you know, theirs is probably mapped out a lot further along than, you know, our, our customer success who needs to produce six in that time frame versus their one. And so for, you know, for them, you're, you're looking at probably a month and a half, two months out, you know, um, to, to get their post done. And then, uh, for, you know, customer success, it's, it's a week, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, ideally we start getting more ahead, but you know, it takes a while to, for, for those types of posts anyways, um, to get the, the case study opportunities lined up and, you know, do those interviews and, you know, all of that. So, um, you know, for, for myself and for Damien, my, my partner, we can get more ahead, mm -hmm. you know, because ours are like typically founder driven. Um, in, in his particular case, it's more sales management, you know, leadership type posts. So, um, but those we can, you know, we can get a, a backlog ahead, you know, if you will. Um, Very cool. and so, you know, it just, it kind of depends on the role, I guess. Yeah. So how about promotion? What, what else? So once an, an article has published or, or is there anything that you do before it publishes to like pre-schedule, uh, kind of stuff. So what's the promotion checklist look like? Yep. So, um, actually let me, let me get into even the, the production side. So we have kind of a, a process there where, uh, ultimately what we'll do is we write the post in Google docs. And so then we use a couple of tools, one called uh, wordable and one call, called a uh, doc IQ. And so doc IQ allows you to assign uh, other contributors to the post. So you can have like one central place for all your content, but then say, okay, this is for, you know, the salesperson and you can invite them and then give them a deadline of when this post is due. So that way they're getting an email on it as well. Once it's, once it's written, then we can use Wordable to, I don't know if you've ever tried to copy and paste content from Google Docs into WordPress, but it's a nightmare. So Wordable does all of the formatting and it strips out all of the like span tags and, and all this crap that ends up, you know, getting copied over if you copy and paste. So Wordable, you know, just strips all that out, formats it properly and, and gets the images in place. I mean, it does, it's, it's pretty awesome. Nice. And so uh, it takes no time at all to go from Google Doc into WordPress that way, essentially. And then, so that's kind of our, our production process. So obviously we, we move that into the, the writing board once, once that, you know, starts taking place. But, um, another thing that we'll do, and obviously this depends on the type of content, but we'll reach out to influencers and experts like before the post to get, uh, or I'm sorry, before the post gets published to get, you know, quotes and, and tips and whatever else. Mm -hmm. And so that way it kind of starts the relationship with them. So oftentimes you see people talk about, you know, doing influencer outreach and, and they do that after the fact, you know, Hey, right. you know, what do you think about this? You know, I think your audience would love this, but, but there's nothing like they haven't invested anything into this. So exactly. They're, they're, I see that you're, you're totally right. I see that all the time and all of us get hit up with cold emails from somebody you've never heard of before a blog you've never heard of before. Like, and you know, there's, you see these new tactics where like, Hey, we just wrote a thing. Is it all right if I send you the link? And then and then you're supposed to say, reply yes, and then they do send right. you the link. They expect you to to share it. I mean, there's no there's no val there, there's no two way value there. But I I like the idea of asking someone for a quote or 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 at least mentioning them in the article and say, hey, we mentioned you, uh, we used you as an example in this article. Just just so, and it's up to you if you want to share it or not. Like typically they do, but um, you know there has to be some two way value there. 
Totally. And when you're when you're promoting them uh, and, and, you know, they've invested a little bit in, in cre- you know, type typing out whatever quote they want you to use that they've at least become a little invested in this piece. And so now when you go back to them and say, you know, I included you, it's live, you know, would love for your feedback. If, if you share it, great. If not, that's fine, too. But but thank you so much for, you know, being a part of it. They're much more likely to to share that at that point. And it helps spruce up the blog post a little bit. You know, you can use block quotes for their tips. And, you know, mm-hmm. just from a formatting standpoint, it just looks much nicer. Yep. And so, yeah, so that's part of the, the process. And then we also have kind of like when it's an editing, we use a service called Becorate. B E decorate, but with a B instead of a D. And so basically what they do is beautify the the post. And so, you know, they'll go through it and look for images that they can create and they'll create like your header image and stuff like that as well. And so it's a newer service. We're, we're just kind of testing it out, but so far so good there. Um, and then, you know, we'll look at also, and this is just kind of our, for our purpose, but we, we want to do a lot of guest blogging this this next year and so when we get hit up with with a form uh uh, you know like a contact form to like they want to write on our blog as a guest post we'll ask to also do one with them Hmm. and if it's a lower authority type site what we want to do is take content that we've written and just kind of spin it Mm -hmm. so not not be too concerned that it's like this amazing piece of value um, just for these lower authority sites and you, and you don't hear people say stuff like this. So this is kind of like an open, <laughs> just honest conversation here. Yeah. But, um, on the higher authority sites, you want to spend your time and, and really make it a, a valuable piece. But, you know, uh, and you can look up like Moz has a domain authority tool with their open site explorer that you can check what their domain authority is. And if it's a lower, you know, authority, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to put your best content there, you know, so spinning your content. And so you can have typically the person that wrote the content you don't want that person to be the one that spins it and so um what we'll do is have like you know if someone on upwork or something like that take the content and just rewrite it yeah. you know um and and then now it's fresh content and you know it, it's all good so cool. um yeah so that'll be a process that we're implementing and then from there the the promotion side so this gets you know this gets pretty wild here and this is where a lot of people fail, you know, um, because it's so easy to feel like the job's done once you hit publish, right? Like so much time and effort went into creating the post, but the, the promotion side is where, you know, it gets obviously gets shared and, and that's where the value comes in. So, um, this is the process that I'm, I'm constantly kind of tweaking this and looking for opportunities to improve it. I had my agency even spin off Buzznami, which, you know, kind of does a uh, just promotion only um, because I just feel like it's it's too important of a process to not have. And, and at the time, LeadFuse is just, you know, it was it, me and one other person for a while. And so we, we couldn't devote resources into promotion. So it's kind of a, a selfish thing there. But, it, you know, it's 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 valuable. So the promotion process and and again this is always due to change and be added to and some sites might you know no longer be operational so um obviously you know for us if we're producing two pieces of content a week we don't want to send an email out to our list you know every time we roll out a new piece of content so yeah more likely going to go to a weekly email blast uh highlighting some of the content and, and other things um you know something that we could be doing and so I kind of have a question mark on my promotion list here is affiliate promotion. So, you know, um, and, and it might just be the content that our customer success person puts together that, that we share with affiliates first or something. But, you know, they'll be able to, to replace links with their affiliate link. And, you know, oh, that'll kind of help us. Yeah. So I want to do a little more for with affiliates. So, so affiliates of the LeadFuse product can just share out your your content and, and append their their affiliate ID. So, yep, exactly. Cool. And so then, uh, you know, another site for us, this might not be relevant, but the concept is, uh, so closing call is kind of the sales community. It's the equivalent to inbound or growth hackers.com, but for sales people. And so, uh, full disclosure, we actually just took over that site. And so we're going to be updating that whole thing. But, uh, anyway, same kind of community. So that's a place we'll, we'll post it. Um, let's see here. So, uh, at the bottom of each post, we want to drive them to um, kind of a like this this lead lead gen university 
course that we're putting together uh-huh. uh, within the post itself. Obviously, we want to have the content upgrade in place. Um, you know, another thing you can do is like gate some of the content or, you know, bring addition. So maybe if it's, you know, nine ways to do X, but then in the post itself, you know, here's three more bonus ways or whatever, but to get it, you know, you need to share it. And so I've had a lot okay. of success with that. Um, even on my, my personal blog a couple of years ago, I, I put together a whole list of sources to submit your startup to. So what, what else are you doing? Like a, just through social media, like through the, the lead few social media channels and anything else on, on social? Yeah, so really just outreach to people that we've included, you know. Um, so doing that, we we submit it to Edgar as part of our library. So we'll we'll do you know two to three different variations in Edgar, uh, but then in Buffer, you know, we also use Buffer to schedule it out in advance. Mm-hmm. And on that, for each post, we'll probably we'll, we'll do ten to fifteen different tweet so it's not just the same it's not just the article title repeated um but you know we like to different, take different quotes quotes yep exactly things. cool and that's the other thing too when we're creating the content we'll we'll use like a, a you know click to tweet embed which looks nice kind of helps break it up but obviously <laughs> encourages social shares that way mm-hmm. um you know submitting to more like sites like you know inbound growth hackers reddit if if you're able to if it if it's you know you got to be careful with that one uh a new one that i want to try out is flipboard um, so I've, I've seen that where, you know, on, on iPhones, you know, you can like the news, the news, uh, yeah, so you can, yeah. So you can create an account there and submit your content there and have it show up in that category, you know? And so, yeah, it's a, it's pretty interesting. Huh. Um, there's one sas.community, which again is kind of SaaS related, but similar to a growth hackers or closing call. Um, there's, you know, bootstrappers IO, there's growth talk, there's SaaS. Yeah. So like, are you spending time going into community sites and, yeah. and like just dedicating like some, some time every week and, and is it the writer's job? Like the, the person who wrote every article, it's their job to go into these different communities and, and kind of post something new or, or add it as a response to a question or something like that. For right now, I'm actually going to be taking on that responsibility. Um, we'll we'll be bringing on someone to actually, you know, take that off my plate going into quarter two of next year. Um, but you know, for for right now, I'm the one doing all of the promotion. So they they write it, and then I'll go and and do the promotion, or really have my VA do a lot of it. Um, you know, so like my, my VA will have, you know, access to my LinkedIn. So we repost the article on LinkedIn. They'll have access to medium. They'll repost it on medium. Um, they'll submit it to these communities, you know, but the other advantage too is when you're doing guest posts, the nice thing is you, you want to actually do some promotion of those guest posts also, because then you're able to, uh, submit to these communities, but it's not just your blog URL the whole time that you're submitting. Right. So if you're submitting a third party blog to Reddit in particular, it, it doesn't get flagged. Like if you look at, you know, if an admin looks at your profile and it's just all leadfuse.com slash blog, you know, like it's all our URLs, like you're, you're going to get shut down. Yeah. So having the guest post help, you know, um, so so spending some time promoting those. Yeah, for sure. Are you doing any anything with uh, paid paid ad acquisition for content, like promoting posts or doing any sort of retargeting or anything like that? We, so I have it here. Um, we're not currently, but that will be something that we start to do at some point. Um, you know, in, in particular, driving people to, you know, paid ads to drive people to a blog post. If they've seen a blog post, then, you know, you can maybe invite them to a webinar. Um, if they've, you know, attended or at least clicked through the webinar page, then invite them to a free trial of the software, you know, so kind of gradually work your way up mm-hmm. uh, would be the, the plan there. Uh, but yeah, we, we haven't actually started to run any yet. Very cool. Uh, cool. I mean, whoa. I mean, you, you shared like a thousand different tools and, and some awesome <laughs> checklists and, and workflows. I mean, I'm sure uh, folks are going to go back on this one and, and replay it and, and definitely take some notes. I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, and just, you know, go over to, to leadfuse.com and spy on what they're doing. You know, um, I, I think you guys have been doing a great job with it. And uh, I, I know it's always evolving too. So, um, yeah, I mean, any, any other like final uh, tips or for, for anyone who's who's kind of getting started with content marketing in their company or they've been doing it, but they're looking to double down. Like what, what's kind of working right now today we're, you know, we're getting near the end of 2016 going into 2017. What, what's kind of the something new that people should be thinking about um, that maybe it wasn't necessarily a, a thing to, to focus on a few years ago. Well, I think if you're, if you're just getting started with content, it, it can feel overwhelming, right? I mean, I, I, I've 
gone through, you know, half of our process. Right. And, and there's, you know, there's still so much more that you can do. And so, um, the, the best thing is just, just get started. It's so you can get overwhelmed early on when it's like, Oh, I've got all of these ideas for, for a blog post. Um, or maybe you don't have ideas. So then, you know, what do I do? But, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, so the, the presidential election type thing, the, the sales strategies that Donald Trump used, I literally wrote that in 35 minutes. I had the, I had the idea and I was like, oh man, you know, this is perfect timing. There could be a little newsjacking angle here and virality potential. And so let me, let me throw this together. I had a meeting on the other side of town. I mean, I just, I, I, I always start with an outline. Okay. I want to cover these five, six items. And then I, I work on my intro and I work on my conclusion first. And then I go and kind of fill in, fill in the blanks. Um, and you know, it, it, it was quick and easy, but you know, if you're another thing, you know, if you're struggling for ideas, use a tool like BuzzSumo. And so you can look up what your competitors are, are talking about, you know, um, and, and pull in a competitor URL, see, you know, their, their most shared content. Um, you can look up some keywords that are relevant in your industry, see what content's ranking, and then look for opportunities to, to improve that. So that's called, called the skyscraper technique. And mm -hmm. uh, Dean at, at Backlinko goes fully in depth with that if, if you're curious there. Uh, but that's a great process. Uh, and it helps you dominate keywords, you know. And so, you know, picking up some of those longer tail keywords. I mean, right now, I mean, it's insane how much traffic we get for, you know, follow up subject line type keywords. You know, yeah. because we have blog posts on subject lines. I mean, subject line is, uh, you know, th those related keywords are probably a quarter of all of our blog traffic that comes from search engines are, are related. So, you know, just you wouldn't even think about that normally, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, just producing some of that longer form content. I mean, there's so many variations of those keywords that your content will get found for, too. So, yeah, um, totally. yeah so I, I would I would just, you know start there for, for ideas. And then once you have one, just sit down and get it done. And, and, you know, what, what's helpful for me is I used to, I used to have a goal of 750 words per day, uh, to write. And I found that over time it got a little stressful. And so I changed that to 250 words a day and 250 words is, I mean, that's it, like it's three a, paragraphs. It's, yeah. Not even, I mean, it's yeah. just so easy. It's so easy to do. And what you end up finding is that you'll still end up writing your 750, 800 words because the, the hardest you thing started is you like, yeah, very cool. So lowering that barrier a little bit just makes it a little easier to get started and, and you feel less guilty about it. So, um, you know, just start small and, and yeah, you know, I mean, like as, as a company, I love the idea of pulling in different team members and, and, and then put it and then pulling them together with a process. I, I, lo I like that what you guys are doing there. Um, that would be great to get to get a hold of those uh, checklists if you can send those over. I'll, I'll link them up okay. al along with this video. And of course, you know if you're um, using Audience Apps Calendar, you, you know you can set up these repeatable checklists to go with your your article production. So you know it'd be cool to even literally like steal Justin's lead fuse checklist and, and use it in your content. Um, so uh, so awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Justin. Yep. You people, bet. Thanks for having can, me. People uh, can check you out over at leadfuse.com. Uh, anywhere else people can uh, connect with you. Yeah, feel, I mean, feel free to shoot me an email, Justin at leadfuse.com. Uh, hit me up on, on Twitter, JUS10McGill. Yeah, and you co-host uh, with Greg Hickman, the Zero to Scale podcast. Definitely a good one to, to check out for sure. You got it. All right. All right, see you later, man. All right, take care.